All right, let's keep it going. We're going to now think about how our building distribution should be handled across the surface of this planet. I don't really like the shape of this land. I'm going to go back here and just kind of mess around with the W value a little bit. Maybe take the scale to 0.15. Maybe take this down a little bit. Hmm. Looks okay. Okay. Uh, all right. So anytime we're instantiating objects on another object or on the surface of another object or within it or whatever, we're going to be using point distribution. Okay. So there's a node for that. It's called, well, there's a few nodes, but we want the one that is distribute points on faces. We're going to drop that in right here for now. And we only want to distribute points from the land, not the not the C, right? That wouldn't make any sense. And let's go look back over here. Remember that the you know all our land was kind of coming up through this way and the, the water was coming in through that way. So right here, if we preview this node with, remember that, that's control shift click, preview that, that should isolate the land for us so we can just verify uh, that we know what we're doing. So this is the, the these are the faces that I want to bring in to distribute points on top of. So I'm going to grab this mesh that's coming out of that uh, subdiv node and bring it into the mesh for the point distribution. And now if I move my preview over here now, notice whenever I do that, if I hit control shift click, the viewer node doesn't really move. That's kind of annoying. You have to kind of like move it around. It's I wish it would just kind of update its position near the node that we're looking at, but uh, you know, can't have everything, I guess. So this, uh, let's take a look. So this is just the points. We're just, we're only previewing the points that are generated from this distribute points on faces node. So this looks pretty good, but right now I, I don't want to, I don't want this whole planet surface group to get over complicated. I want to split this off into its own kind of, uh, I just want to keep things organized. So I'm going to select, actually I'll select both of these, these nodes here, the distribute points on faces and our viewer, and I'm going to hit uh, Alt P and that will break that out of this group. And I can now hit Control J, join those up and name this. Uh, let's just name this um, <laughs> building distribution. But I still want to see the general world that we're building. So I want to join this again up at the end with a join geometry node. So hit shift a search for join geometry, drop another one in at the end, and then join up the points that this thing produces up with the rest of the world here. And we can preview this now over here and we can now see kind of what we're doing a little bit better. I'm going to get rid of our viewer with X. So now we just have our point distribution, all the stuff that we did in the last video here and then finally all the stuff joined up at the end now points are good but we want these points to be buildings so what we do there is add in with shift a let's add a instance on points node let's drop that right after the point output from the point distribution and the instance on points node is this is this is a powerful node. So it can take in a few different things and do things to stuff that is going to be instantiated on those points. And the, at a minimum, it needs to know what you want to instance on those points. Well, we're going to just for now, this is just going to be a placeholder, but we're going to add in a cube. Just drop that in anywhere and then add the mesh into the instance. And now we have a bunch of cubes everywhere. It's way too many but we'll deal with that in a second. Actually, let's deal with it now. Let's bring the density of the point distribution way down, something around here would be good. And now you'll notice that they're all rotated the same way. We need them to be, we need them to be perpendicular to the surface on which they're standing. So to do that, actually this is part's very easy. When we generate all these points here, it also gives us for free their normal, which is it basically refers to the direction that they face, but also their rotation. And we're going to use the rotation to define which rotation all the instances have. So all we need to do is hook up the rotation to the rotation and we get uh, right away without doing a lot of work, all these cubes rotated uh, you know, in, in the correct way. 
Okay, now there's a couple things I want to take care of before we get uh, further into this process. There's there's two things I want to address right now. One is that the cubes are intersecting with each other. So the distribute points on faces, the default method is random. It's just randomly going to position points on the faces. It doesn't care where they are. It's just completely random. Well, that's going to result in cubes that are or you know or instances on these points that are just colliding and intersecting with one another that might be what you want depending on what you're doing but that's not what we want here a little bit of intersection is okay but not like not like this so we're going to change random to poisson disk and that is a fancy algorithm that avoids collision well it's not right now because the the minimum distance is zero but it gives us a few more powerful parameters. One of them is the distance min. And we, if we increase this, we can say, maintain a minimum distance between each of these otherwise randomly generated points. So let's just move that up a little bit. We can change this later, but you can see now that's a lot cleaner. We can also control you know, the maximum density that there is. So we can make sure that they're kind of sparse and a minimum distance and then a density factor, which is basically kind of the amount of points that are generated. So all that stuff can be altered later as we, you know, we're going to come back to a lot of these values as we go through these videos to kind of tweak things and make them look better. But right now we're just kind of getting the basic placeholders here. So we see kind of how things are taking shape. Okay. So cubes intersecting with one another, that was the first problem. The other problem you might have already noticed is that some of these cubes are generated on the edge of the, the land surface and that's curved so these things are kind of pointing out to the side that's definitely not what we want either so uh, what we need to do is make sure that the faces that these points are being distributed on are not on the edge or the kind of the lip of this land surface. Now I'm going to turn on wireframe so we can see what we're doing a little bit more. We turn on wireframe, take the opacity down a little bit. And you can see that there are faces in here that we don't want involved in this point distribution. Now I think there's some clever ways to do this, but uh, I'm always in favor of just, you know, a simpler way. I think what we're going to do is go back to where we were constructing the land in the first place. So let's preview some stuff back here. So we have our subdivision, we have our extrude mesh here. Uh, okay, and then we have before we extruded it here. So let's let's go back here for a second and notice, actually, no, let's go back to the extrude. So I'm hitting Control Shift P on the extrude right here. So we're previewing this extrude mesh node and here's kind of the start of our problem. So we have the top of the the top of our land and then the side of our land. So when we extrude something, here's another kind of little thing that we get for free when we use this node. We not only do we get the mesh that the extrusion produces, but we also get a selection for parts of the new mesh. So we get a selection for the top of it and we get a selection for the side. So these let me zoom in a little bit for you. So these, these faces here on the, the side are defined by the output of that socket. And we're going to use that to delete these side faces. So we're going to be left with kind of a, a rim around here. And this is the zone that we want to be considering for our point distribution. We don't want to actually consider any of this stuff in here. So I'm going to grab the output of that extrusion. And when I release this, it's going to give me a search menu and I want to delete geometry at that point. So I'm going to drop in a new delete geometry node and let's preview that. Now remember from when we were starting this process that everything is deleted. So we need to provide the selection socket input, what we want deleted. And remember we get the side selection for free when we extrude the mesh. So I'm going to hook that right up into selection. And now you can see that all of that geometry was deleted. So let me go back and preview the extrude mesh. So there's the extrusion and we go to the delete geometry here and all that's deleted. So I think this is going to be a good approximation 
for sort of an inset land area that we want to use for this point distribution. So I'm gonna get rid of the viewer and I'm gonna hook this geometry instead. So right now we're, we're using the, you know, the, the, the land that we produce here, but I don't want to use that anymore. I want to use this new inset version of that. So I'm going to take that geometry, plug it into the mesh here on distribute points on faces. And now you can see that I should not have any cubes that are awkwardly spawning on the, the lip or side of the land. And I think that's exactly what we get. All right, let's do a little bit more work on this building distribution. I'm going to make this cube a little bit taller. So right now it's one by one by one, but I'm going to make the Z say four. So now they're a little bit taller. Maybe why not? Let's make it five. And if I look at this now, these big buildings here are, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty evenly distributed throughout this world. It's a little bit boring. So, you know, real planets are going to have areas of, of density. What I want are kind of maybe like neighborhoods or even parts of this planet city that are more densely populated with big buildings and other areas that are kind of low lying or smaller buildings or maybe no buildings at all. And I can uh, I can create that kind of variation with another noise texture. So I'm going to drop that in right here with shift a search for noise texture, drop that guy in there. And this is what's going to define this variation in the, the density and the distribution of these points. Now I could send the factor for this noise texture into a number of these sockets, but I think I want to put it in the selection. So it kind of defines which points even get generated in the first place. So remember when we generated this noise over here, we used this color ramp to reassign those values to zero or one. We're going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to drop in a color ramp here. I'm going to set the method to constant. I'm going to bring that color stop in, hook up the factor. So all these zero to one values are being sent in here and then being reassigned to one of these zero or one values and then sent in to the selection. So now you can see what that is doing. And I'm going to bring the scale down again to maybe something like 0.2, something really low. And now you can kind of see the effect that we're having. And if I want, all our points to be involved in the distribution, I can just simply slide that white color stop all the way down. And if I want less buildings, slide it to the right. I think I'll just keep it somewhere in the middle. So now we kind of have clusters of big buildings and then other areas that just don't have any buildings at all. In fact, this texture to color ramp theme is going to come up a lot in the next uh, couple of videos. So, um, yeah, just get used to that. It's very handy. It does a lot of things for us. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Now, what I want to do is introduce some smaller kind of like super short, like short, small buildings, almost like residential areas or just low, lower lying areas, like street level stuff, as opposed to kind of these long skyscraper things. So I'm going to add in another whole area down here, and that's going to be the building distribution for small buildings. In fact, let's rename this one, this group. I'm gonna select that, hit F2 to rename that um, big buildings, because we're gonna have another one down here for small buildings. And I wanna use a separate point distribution for that. So I'm gonna add in another distribute points on faces down here, and I'm gonna use the same geometry, this sort of inset geometry that we generated earlier to define uh, the mesh that we want to generate points on. I'm going to change random to Poisson disk to make sure that they don't collide with, with one another. And I'm going to instance on points. I'm going to send those points into the input there. And I'm going to join this up with the others so we see what we're doing. OK, and just a little bit more organization here. I'm going to select these two, group them with control J and then F2 to rename those small buildings. And we'll use another cube as a placeholder here. So I'll hit shift A, search for cube. Let's drop that in here. I want to make these cubes a little bit smaller. So let's make maybe 0.25 for now. Send the mesh in to what's being instanced. Now I get all those kind of scattered around the surface. 
And just like before, I want to make sure that the rotation is normalized. So we're going to send in the rotation output for all those points, define the rotation for each instance there. Okay. Add in a little bit of a minimum distance. And now we have a bunch of smaller buildings. This doesn't look fantastic right now, but this, this is just to get ourselves kind of a sense of what we're doing and just get, uh, you know, get ourselves set up as far as these buildings that are going to be distributed around the planet. And I think I want a little bit of that random variation that we did here for the big buildings in terms of how they're kind of clustered and grouped a little bit instead of uniformly distributed like that. So let's do that again. Let's bring in another noise texture. Drop that in here, send the factor into a color ramp set to constant. And then finally send the output of that into the selection. Okay. They all disappear because we're resigning everything to zero or black. So we need to bring in this a little bit to the left and you can see them start to come back. And the noise is a little bit, it's too, the scale is too high. I don't, I'm not even seeing really uh, much of a difference there. So I'm going to bring the scale of the noise back a little bit, maybe something like one. Let's bring the minimum distance down a little bit. Okay. That's not bad. You can kind of see like some areas are, you know, little gaps forming and we can change all of that with this noise texture. That's sort of defining where things are, are, um, are distributed and we can change that distribution here. All right. We're going to come back to this, uh, of course, a number of times later in the tutorial, but now this, this gives us at least some broad strokes on which to work with going forward when we make real buildings and add detail and all that stuff. Okay. We're going to stop here in this video. And then in the next one, we're going to start to model some buildings, some, you know, some real geometry that we're going to use instead of these placeholder kind of uh, simple cubes. So I'll see you in that one.